Hello and welcome back to Playbook for Podcasting. I'm your host, Cade Largen. And I'm John Largen. And today, you know, it's been a while since we've recorded, but uh, for you, you guys, it's just been another week. But um, I want to get into a little bit about what kind of content you can create with the content you're already making, which is your podcast, and how you can go into different facets of social media regarding, you know, your content that you've already got on hand. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do that. And first of all, if you detect a slight difference in Cade's voice, it's because he has been a um, um, little under the weather the last few weeks. You we went to California, so yep. you got out of the heat and got into some cool weather, and then you came back into this, and maybe he's thrown you for a little bit of a loop. Yeah, my lungs have not been happy dealing with uh, the Saharan desert sand or whatever it is in the air, but... Um we're going to fight through it. We're going to make it through. Yeah. Uh, podcasters fight through it. And um, even if you have a, a little uh, twang or, or twitch in your voice or a little hitch, you can just let your audience know and they'll forgive you. I hope so. Yeah. But anyways, so podcasting, right? You've got your podcast by this point, I hope. Or if you thought about it, you know, today's the day. Let's get started. But you've got this, you know, 15 to an hour long stream of content, how can you leverage that into, let's say, TikTok or, you know, Instagram reels or anything like that? Yeah, one of my favorite terms in podcasting is repurpose. And we're going to go over some ways that you can repurpose your content so that you only have to do your topic once really to touch a number of different audiences because people consume content differently and it gives you the flexibility to come in, say what you want to say, and then have the opportunity to convert that same content, that same relevant content to different audiences in social media and blog posting, all those things. So we'll talk about that in a little more in depth. Yeah. And so I guess the first thing we should go over is why? Why do you want to be in these other, you know, social media outlets? And so I know we talked about this a little bit in the content surge episode, but the key is algorithms, right? And so when you're looking at your TikTok or your Instagram reels, the algorithms that decide where your video is getting sent to are much more sporadic and a lot more random. And they lend themselves to reaching new audiences that, you know, organically you may not otherwise have reached. And so what you want to think about is, you know, your podcast might be very specific. So it might be difficult to get into other spaces where there are people that might be interested in that topic, but that's not necessarily what the, the space is designed for. And so when you go and you post on your TikTok or your Instagram Reels, it's going to send it out to a bunch of different people uh, that are not familiar with your content. And so you want to be able to leverage that by you don't have to change your content really in any way. You just want to be able to reach more people and hopefully convert some of those people. One of the things that people, you know, it's in business and everything that uh, the power of duplication. Mm -hmm. And if you think about uh, if you were selling Coca-Cola, you could have a Coca-Cola stand and you could sell from that Coca-Cola stand or you could buy 500 Coke machines that are outside of every school and every library and every mall and you can duplicate yourself with the same product and that makes you one of my favorite words is ubiquitous which means you're everywhere and it, if you think about your favorite um, well, I don't know if you have a favorite, but billboards that you see everywhere or commercials that you see everywhere they don't just run at one time they run it all the time and they run it on different channels different networks and you you now have the the ability to do the same thing with everything that's going out in the social media space and not only that but you can duplicate yourself by becoming a guest and sharing your ideas with with other people and we've talked a little bit about that in prior episodes but repurposing and and creating those audiences is going to in all the spaces that your content could possibly exist is one of the most important things you can do because again once you streamline the process you can you can recreate or repurpose your content in four or five eight ten different places 
in basically a um, click of a few buttons. And, uh, and if you have help doing it, you don't even have to do that. You could hire somebody to do it. Yeah, exactly. The beauty of starting with the podcast is that you have all your content made. And so when you start with, you know, 30 to 45 minutes and now you're shrinking it down to 15 to one minute clips, it makes it a lot more simple because you already have all this content that you can pick from. Just take this little chunk out of each section that you think is the best. And so the way I would go about doing that is have someone that you, you know, your spouse, your, your friends, whoever it might be, have them watch the podcast and then just ask them afterwards, Hey, what was your favorite part? And they'll say whatever they think of that brings them back to this was the highlight for me. Now, you know, okay, obviously that resonated with them. That might be a good clip to put into my TikTok or my, you know, my Instagram reels or wherever, even your LinkedIn. It's just a great way to find those little sweet spots so that you know where to narrow your podcast down to and cut out what you think is the best. Yeah, you know, and I'm going to take people on a journey, and this is even before my time, but back in your grandmother's time and, um, you know, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, the one thing I want to tell you, Nothing is new. Everything has been recreated to fit the times. And back in those days, she told me many times she would go to the theater. And before the movie, before the main, you know, feature presentation, there were some cartoons, there were some newsreels. And then one thing that always came on was like a 12-minute uh, serial. And it was usually some kind of adventure show. I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. And at the end of the 12-minute reel, they had a cliffhanger. The, the star of the show was hanging from a, from a, literally from a cliff, or he was tied to a, a train tracks and was about to be run over. Whatever that situation was, it would cut off then, and you had to come back to the movie theater next week to find out what happened. It's called a hook. And with those clips that you were talking about, the, the thing I like to do and thing I purposely do to try to get more people to listen is I will find a 30 to 40 second clip that has some other things. And then I will say something like, and the most important thing I'm going to tell you about how to grow your audience. And then you fade it out. And then they're like, well, what, what's the answer? Well, you know, that's a hook, and yeah. they're going to click to listen to the whole episode. I know that was a long story to get to a sharp <laughs> point, but, you know, at the same time, you have to understand that these are tried and true methods that work uh, as long as there's been media, and yeah. you don't have to try to get too cute and try to reinvent the wheel because there are really effective ways to do it, and that's certainly one of them. As you talked about, find that clip. You know, not just some random clip. Find something that's really going to draw people in and just leave them hanging so that they can uh, they can uh, click to listen or subscribe to the episode. Yeah, exactly. And, like, I don't know how much time you spend on TikTok, but I, I see a lot of clips where they'll do the same thing, whether it's, like, a video of a dog or whatever it might be, where whatever the, you know, climax of that video is going to be, they cut it off before that. So you have to go and see the part two on their TikTok. Mm. And so you can do the same thing, whether it's, I mean, obviously if you want to direct them to your podcast, that's the way you want to do it. But you can also put the second part on your TikTok and that'll show the algorithm that they're clicking onto your account to watch that second part. Obviously you have something that they want to see and the, the algorithm is going to push that more. And so some people don't like doing that because, you know, they feel like, you know, you're you're misleading people or whatever it might be. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah kind of clickbaity, yeah. but it's up to you. Well, I mean, you know, you, you still want to give them nuggets of wisdom or, you know, advice, whatever that situation is in the clip that you save. But, you, you know, the bottom line is you do want them to do that, and you probably should have told the story because I, I'm not on TikTok, TikTok, TikTok that much. TikTok, yeah. <laughs> TikTok that much, and so uh, you could have told the story in half the time. I had to set it up from the 1930s. Uh, no, I like you it. said, "Hey, they do that on TikTok," and uh, it, you know that's. Uh, but it, to your point, it's the same concept, and and those people that probably do that. I mean, you've probably been sucked into that and clicked yeah. on to see part two just to see if that exactly. dog is gonna 
you know, attack the, the squirrel or whatever it works. It is. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely works. works. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say that's the main, like, if you're trying to be as efficient as possible with the content you already have, that would be my recommendation. Um, but of course you're welcome to create content specifically for these things that aren't necessarily in your podcast. The only thing about that is, you know, it's going to take time. The good thing is TikTok and Instagram, they provide the tools you need to create these videos on one app. So it's not like how it used to be where you'd have to, you know, export it to your computer and then, you know, use some kind of software on your computer to cut it up and then export it back onto your phone or email it to yourself or whatever it might be. Uh, so I would definitely recommend getting comfortable with those apps if you're going to be creating content because they make it as simple as possible. It's not like you have to reinvent the wheel. But if you want to make content you know, quickly, like, I don't know if you remember when we recorded out in the cornfield a few years ago, oh, we, yeah. we literally went out to a cornfield and recorded for, um, uh, Trader's Village, which is a big, um, what yeah, is like it? Like a big giant swap like flea market or, yeah. or flea market. Yeah. Um, but we went out there and recorded and, you know, the guy running the show was like, give me one second, I'm going to record a TikTok. And he, he took a break from what we were doing. He spent about three minutes out in this cornfield with his phone up to him. Like, you know, I don't know if he had the mask on or not or whatever it was. But, you know, he's like, okay, I'm back. I had, to, I had to create a TikTok real quick. But it took him like three minutes and he had it posted to their business account. So my point yeah. with all of this is that if you get sufficient in it, you can create content quickly. And the good thing is it's not an effort to... Uh, view ratio, right? So the more effort you put into a video doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get more views. And what I've seen with a lot of TikTokers is they're like, my most you know popular content was a video I made in you know five minutes just because I thought it was cool and I wanted to show people. Um, versus you know the ones where they sit down and record. Bless you. Thank you. It uh, happens. It, it We're happens. live, folks. We're live. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, so my point is, you know, if you have an idea for a video, you don't have to sit down and like make it this documentary. You can just, you know, take out your phone and record it and it might work out well for you. Well, and a lot of times I've gotten this advice more than once from people that are really super successful in, in the short content, you know, whether that's TikTok or is it, is it, uh, reels, YouTube shorts and YouTube and shorts. Yep. Facebook reels or, or Instagram reels, whatever that is. I, I, again, I, I don't know all of the ins and outs of this, of the social media side, but they, the thing that they tell me is, is exactly what you said. Some of the best videos are kind of unfiltered or you and your authentic self on your phone, mm -hmm. posting directly after you do it or doing it live and keeping it on there. And it doesn't have to be overproduced. And, um, and I've seen that over and over again. And there are some really cool videos that are just people. Uh, I worked with a, a, a client in Dallas, Fort Worth, and he did a one minute podcast. Uh, and it was called a minute with his name. And he was always walking. He was working out. He mm -hmm. was, he, you know, he's an older gentleman, but he was like, Hey, this is how you got to take care of yourself. And, and they did phenomenally well. And um, so, yeah, to your point, again, um, bigger is not always better. And just yeah. being, being yourself is the best. For sure. And that's what exactly what I was going to touch on is that whatever content you do decide to make, make sure that you're exuding whatever your content is about to the fullest extent. And what I mean by that is, like, if you're a super bubbly, you know, podcaster and you have, like, really high energy, make sure you can, you know, convey that through your TikToks. And even overdo it if you need to, like, because the point is you want to be able to advertise and market yourself and this short form content. And so whatever you're trying to, you know, convey to your audience, make sure that that's, you know, front and center on whatever that content is. Uh, because when people go to your podcast after seeing your video, your little TikTok, they want to see more of whatever it was. Right. And so you don't want to mislead them or have the content be something separate from your podcast or whatever it might be. Uh, so I just say like, focus on whatever your podcast is and whatever you're trying to, you know, whatever message you're trying to convey, make sure that your TikToks not necessarily have to stay on that message, but they they have that underlying tone to them. I know we're just about out of time, but one other thing I want to touch on quickly, and we may have mentioned this in an earlier episode, I'm not sure, but, um, you can take 
a collection of your podcast over a period of time. And it, it, it will take a while, but we've worked with people that have taken their podcast, never lifted a finger, and created books uh, on the content. They, they get the transcriptions. They figure out how they want to re- reconfigure some things to make it flow correctly as a book. Yep. But there are a lot of podcasters, and a lot more that should, that have great content that could turn those into ebooks, could turn those into audiobooks, could turn those into hardcover books. And so don't underestimate how many different ways you can get your message out because the YouTube audience is often not the podcast audience. The blog post is not always the ebook audience. And so you may think, okay, I'm just beating a dead horse here, as they used to say. I don't know if that's politically correct anymore. But you're not because people consume things differently. And, you know, we've we've dabbled in creating um, streaming channels and all kinds of new technology things that uh, – because, again, those are all different audiences, and we've yeah. we've seen success with that. So, again, if, if there's one takeaway, your, your content – is consumable in as many ways as you can consume anything else you do. Yeah. So keep that in mind that you're not overdoing it when you're repurposing your content. But repurpose is the work, word for the day. I have an analogy, and it, maybe it's not good, but your podcast is the potato, and then with that potato, Uh-oh. you can turn Uh-oh. it into fries over here on your TikTok. You can turn yeah. it into... What's, what else can you make? Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes <laughs> over here on your Instagram reels. Um, and you can turn it into uh, Chick-fil-A waffle fries. We'll do you the waffle. Turn it into, uh, <laughs> I would have used pork because pork, our good friend's the pig. You know, the pig, bacon, pork chops, ham. Uh, I, I just don't know that much food, I guess. Baloney, all these different kind of things from the, 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 as Homer Simpson would say, the magical animal known as the pig because it, it, uh, I saw this all picture. those different things. But I understand your analogy. I like the potato. I, you could have come up with a few more though. Although I, saw, I don't know what else, what else can you I was going to say corn potato? because I saw this, I saw this picture of this like pantry and it had like all these like highly processed foods and like, uh, just like, and anyways, it was like, all these different foods and drinks and things, and it just said, this is all corn. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I was like, Corn syrup and all that. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. Well, I, w- we, can, we can talk about uh, how we can repurpose potatoes and pigs on another episode yeah. sometime. But uh, we want to thank you guys for listening to us. And if you have any questions for us, you can go to our website, which is Playbook for Podcasting. Dot com, and there is a button where you can actually click and talk to us and ask us a question, leave us a comment, roast us, whatever you want to do. Tell, tell me I'm the old man yelling at the clouds. I don't care. Whatever you want to do, but we'd love to hear from you. And uh, in a future episode, we plan on doing a, um, a Q&A from the audience, and uh, we'll just pull the, the audio of you asking questions or leaving comments, and I think it'll be a really funny and fun and maybe educational episode, or it may just be roasting us uh, the entire time. Whatever you, whatever, any feedback is better than no feedback. You're going to learn that from your podcast. If if you make fun of us, we're doing something right. Also, I I feel or like we have wrong. to say check out our TikTok and Instagram as well. Playbook That's for right. podcasting. We do have that. See, I yeah, you're in charge of all that. So you you're the you're the uh, you're the youngster, you and uh, Tiffany, who is on our team. She is awesome, by the way. And I think uh, let's, I think let's she made a blooper. Her a quick shout out, yeah. Shout out, Tiffany, the real MVP. But she has given us. Did, did you did you say she's done blooper reels? I believe she has a blooper video out on TikTok, or at least she's going to. So mm, make sure to that check that be, out of all of our be, uh, yeah mistakes. That, that would be a reason to roast us, yeah. Yeah. But uh, thank you guys for listening, and we appreciate it. We uh, we're getting more listeners every week. We're still in our infancy in this particular podcast, but I'm having fun. I hope you're having fun, Kate. I'm having a lot of fun. Yeah, this is awesome. We'll talk to you guys next week right here on Playbook for Podcasting.